So in this demo, we're going to use Sonotype's lifecycle to look at every aspect of the software supply chain, giving security teams quick access to the applications that live inside their SCM system. So one of the things that lifecycle users want to do is be able to onboard their applications quickly and efficiently. I'm going to be able to automatically import applications that are in my SCM system, in this case, Azure DevOps, into lifecycle so that I can then do evaluations. When the applications are imported, I'm going to inherit all of the policies from my root policy, where I've got security policies, I've got legal policies. These policies are going to be used in the reporting. They're going to be used to control the life cycle. So in my build process, I may want to fail or warrant. I'll come to my SCM system and life cycle automatically evaluates the application from the source control and puts the results into the SCM system. This is really important because I want to put the results and I want to put all the actions that need to happen where the developers or where the security teams are, right? I don't want them to have to come into my lifecycle tool. I want it all right there. So from here, I can quickly come in. I've got a report. When I do that evaluation, I'm listing all of the components that are part of the evaluation. I see direct dependencies. I see transitive dependencies. But when I select an individual component, I can see the recommended version based on policy, any security vulnerabilities, any policy violations. So this gives me all the detailed information I need to help me remediate, solve my problem. So the other part of what customers want to do with Lifecycle and the integration to their SCM system, I want to be able to automatically create pull requests. And that's what Lifecycle will do. Lifecycle will see a component, and if there's a clear path to remediation, will create an automatic pull request. That pull request will explain what version are we coming from, what new version, what's the policy, but it gives the development and the security teams an automatic way to upgrade that component. In addition to automatically evaluating that source repository, it's going to evaluate any branches. It's going to look at any pull requests and do an evaluation on those pull requests as well. So in this case, I'm going to put the results of that evaluation in the pull request itself in a comment. Okay, this is important because I want to keep the context for the developer inside the tools that they're using, like their source control management. Anything new that I added, any new policy violation in this pull request is going to be marked, anything I fixed. Now, let's take a look real quick at policies. So we created our applications. We have policies applying to them. The lifecycle policy engine is incredibly robust. It allows me to create security policy violations, licensing, architecture, things like age and popularity. And when I create these policies, I can use any of the metadata that's associated with the components in my constraints. It can be as simple as trigger a policy violation if my CVSS score is greater than or equal to 9.8 in this case. Or maybe I want to drill in a little bit more and say, well, I don't want it to be a build tool and I don't want to have certain labels. The power behind these policies is not just in the definition of the policies, but it's in the actions that are taken when those policies are failed. So for example, I can have different actions at different stages of the life cycle. So in this case, I might have a security policy that I only want to warn early in the development process because I want the developers to actually remediate and fix. And then later in the software supply chain, be able to trigger a failure, whether it's in my build system or it's in my release system. I'm also able to pick different notifications for the different types of stages understanding that maybe in operations, I'm using ServiceNow, and maybe in development, I'm using something like a Jira. So I have to have that flexibility to different notifications at different places.